Alrighty. Uh, I haven't done anything with this channel for a while, basically because there was nothing going wrong or nothing worth reporting, I guess. Um, we are a little over 10 months into this system, being completely off the grid, powering my life with nothing but electricity. I don't have any propane appliances or, or devices or whatever. Everything I do, from electrically mowing my lawn to electrically rototilling my garden, cooking, heating, water heating, cooling, um, all my power tools, all my saws and everything. I've yet to find a device that it won't power. Um, I've overloaded it with multiple things, but... Most people have probably seen the video where I have my air conditioner on high and then I click on my 1000 watt cooktop and then go outside and simultaneously mow the lawn. Not that anybody would do that because that's ridiculous, but excuse me, just proving the, the uh, potential of the actual system. To recap, I've got about $1,300 into this, a little under. Uh, I've got 600 watts in panels, an MPPT charge controller with Bluetooth and uh, thermometer. Uh, 3 kilowatts of lithium-ion battery storage, and a 24-volt, 2,500-watt, continuous 5,000-watt uh, DC to AC inverter. Um, like I said, back in early February, I clicked this thing on and went exclusively electric. Uh, I don't have anything else that is anything but electric. My whole life is that way. Anyway, uh, one of the most common questions I get is, how come you don't have a BMS, or why don't you have a BMS, or... How do you deal with that without having one? And that's what we're going to go through here right now. Sorry about this weird jerry rig system, but it's the only way that I could get that into the frame and be able to do this with both hands and not drop everything. So we're going to start at one end here, and it doesn't matter. But this is just how I manually check mine. We're going to go and uh, get to... What does that say? Six. Oh, I'm on 200 volts. That's why it doesn't make sense. Click it back down to 20 because each individual module shouldn't be over 20. You'll have much bigger problems if it is. All right, these aren't full because I was cutting wood this morning, but we're just going to go with the numbers of right now. Uh, so 738. Oh, first of all, there's two groups of three. Uh, three modules together in series, three modules in series together, and then paralleled those two together. So there's 22, I mean, there's two 24-volt batteries that are paralleled. Anyway... Back to here, we will do 738, 738, 738, 739. I'm good with one one hundredths of a volt. Now, these two are the same used capacity. And what I mean by that is I should have explained that before I get into this. Uh, my system is very unique to the point where I've got four different uh, capacity, capacity, uh, I don't even know what you call that, uh, the different voltages, I guess, after they pulled them out of the, the, the car. Um, they come stamped with that information on there so you know what it is prior to them shipping it to you after they removed it from the car. Anyway, it's because of that that I have uh, four different voltages because when I first bought these things over two years ago before I started in on this project, uh, I was inexperienced, naive, and didn't realize that that was the worst possible idea. And so what I ended up with was four different voltages because they came at four different times and were, came out of four different cars. Um, if I was to put a BMS on here, what a BMS does and its main job is to equal everything out, to keep everything you know relatively the same or as close to the exact same voltage as they can, which is good. You know, if you start out with uh, with batteries that are all the same, like when you, I should have ordered these six modules all at the same time so that they would have all come out of the same car and they would all be at the same voltage and I wouldn't have this headache. But if I put a BMS on this, this guy back here, you can't see it because of the uh, multimeter, but. It's my lowest capacity, and if I installed a BMS on this, number one, it would be a headache because you have to connect every tiny little thing. Two, it would do its job and bring it down to that lowest capacity. I've got these two modules that are over a half a volt difference between their used capacity that's available right now. So if I was to install a BMS, it would cut these two down by a half a volt and these two by about two and a half tenths of a volt. Um, that, I don't know what the exact per, uh, percentage of that would be, but it's got to be somewhere between 10 and 20% that I would just automatically be losing uh, before I even started. And I just didn't feel that I had a system that was too big to manually check, and I just didn't want to give that up. Uh, another thing is, is obviously mine's in a cupboard where I can open it up and have access to it easily anytime I want and monitor it that way. Not everybody has that. They put their solar systems in you know, inaccessible places, and it would be a hassle to do that. Uh, the the price is also, you know, that you spend over $100, you might get one with a screen or an app that'll tell you real life, real time what's happening. But otherwise, 
if you spend under that, you're going to get one that doesn't even have a screen. And uh, the only way that you're going to know that it's actually working or not is to manually test them. And if you're going to do that, why not just manually test them on your own? Um, there is no reason. That's why I made this update, though, because nobody's writing the rules on this stuff. Nobody knows any of these time frames and, and whatnot for sure. Nobody's had a, a battle-born lithium-ion battery in their solar system for 30 years and is able to give you real-life uh, actual data. So I'm just checking in after 10 months to let you know that absolutely nothing has changed. I have not lost any capacity or state of charge or anything. I've still got mixed match cells, but... Uh, they still don't get much more than, I think the worst case scenario was about under a half a volt still, but it was like four, four and a half tenths of a volt. Um, and I will get into how to correct that if that does happen. But first, I wanted to go through all these. Um, these first two are going to be relatively the same, or should be. I've uh, been charging. These aren't full capacity because I was cutting wood earlier, but 739, 739. Do, 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 739, 739, perfect, right on the dot. These two are significantly less than these other two because the two in my middle here are uh, uh, my highest capacities. I'm going to move this just so you can see. I'm, I'm going to, talking about these two right here. I don't want to pull it up there too far. You won't be able to see it. And then, so these are going to be probably more like 7, 6 something maybe. Ooh, look at that. It's actually getting up higher. That's the charge. The sun must have come out a little bit there. Anyway, 774, and I'd say... This, this is going to be my biggest discrepancy between two modules. Let's call that 7.5, and this one was 7.74, so that's 3.5, just under 3.5 tenths of a volt. Keep that in mind. That's the worst that's happened so far here. 3.5 tenths off. Back here, going to be even lower than the first two because they're the lowest that I have. 7.55, 7.55, and 7... Four, six, so that's not even a tenth of a volt. That's nine one hundredths of a volt between those two. I'm more than okay with that, and we can debate that later if you want, but I don't feel that's anything to be concerned about. Now, these two, this parallel connection here, because they are paralleling the two batteries together, um, is going, oops, <laughs> put them on, put the right probe, then you won't get that negative si signal. Uh, so seven, seven, four, and seven, five, that's, excuse me, that's two tenths or two and a half tenths. Uh, still under three tenths of a volt. And like I said, the worst possible case scenario that I ever had was a little over four. Um, I'm not even really concerned about that because, like I said, we're still charging. I'm only at probably, I don't know, 55, 60% right now. It's still kind of overcast. Um, anyway, the, that is uh, not something to uh, get too excited about right now because it is still charging. Now, if they get back up to 100% and I come back and check this and they're still three-tenths of a volt apart, uh, that's that's not right. Uh, I'm not comfortable with that. So what I do in that point is get the biggest loads I have between my cooktop and my space heater uh, combined is the 2,500 watts total. So I put that, which is the rating of the, of the inverter. So I put that heavy load on there for 10, 15 minutes and then unplug everything else and disconnect all the loads and draws and whatnot and just let the solar system do its job. It'll trickle that it back in through the charge controller and it'll bring all those cells back up. Maybe not bring them up equally as it's coming back up, but they will finally equal themselves out once they get closer to 80, 90, 95%. Um, now, so far in the 10 and a half months or so that I've been doing this, I have not had to do that more than a half a dozen times and I have never had to do it twice. You'll see old timers using sealed lead acid batteries and whatnot, and they'll charge and discharge and charge and discharge and charge and discharge over and over and over again, trying to get them back into balance. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Um, I've never, I've never done that with a bank of, of lead acid batteries or gel or AGM or whatever. But this is my system. I realize it's a little bit unique because of those voltage capacities, but none of the the techniques or methods or anything are exclusive to this system. They're just a little bit more extreme because of of the experimentalness that I was doing with this system. Two years ago, you couldn't find anybody on to YouTube with a 24-volt mobile off-grid system using Nissan Leafs, uh, excuse me, Nissan Leaf battery modules. Um, you know, there may have been, but truly off-grid people aren't on YouTube, <laughs> you know, so uh, I just couldn't find them. There are lots of people out there using these, ba these battery modules and 48-volt systems. It's just 48-volt uh, equipment costs almost double 
inverters are almost double, you know, and, and to step it down to your 12 volt appliances or whatever costs more and more and more the higher you go. And I just didn't need 48 volts. That's more power than I could ever possibly need. This is more power than I could really ever possibly need, to be honest. Um, I've contemplated adding three more. Uh, but now that I've gotten through the winter solstice and I've made it through an entire winter combined, I don't think that I, I don't, I certainly don't need it. There definitely were a couple days there where I was down to, you know, 20, 25, 30% before I went to bed, but I don't, I never waited. I was never waiting for a charge or waiting for the sun or waiting to use an appliance or, or whatnot. It, it just ne hasn't come to that. Uh, even on the crappiest of days, uh, snowing blizzard outside, I still draw 100 watts from my solar panels. It's not the 600 that I have, but it still gives me a charge. I'm still able to cut my wood. I'm still able to cook my lunch. still able to mow my lawn and rototill my garden electrically. You know, it hasn't hindered me in any way. Nine, nine modules, if I added three to this, would just be... I don't know, you could have a disco party at 2 o'clock in the morning while cooking everybody dinner or, or whatever, you know, or an air conditioner on while cooking and, and rototilling or something. But those are, 